Hey, this is the great Johannes here. A journalist asked Jordan Peterson once uh, why so many men followed his advice or listened to his voice. And she said that these men had trouble with their manhood. And that can't possibly be true. The men who listen to the advice given by men like Joe Rogan or Jordan Peterson or Andrew Tate, they don't do so because there's something wrong or missing with their manhood. It's rather that women don't love so many men anymore. So many men are just not good enough for women. And so the men try to upgrade themselves. They try to improve themselves. In fact, I believe that what feminists call toxic masculinity is actually a normal response to the fact that women have become so much more picky, or so it seems. And I guess I should be a little bit personal about this topic. The number one lesson I wish I had understood as a younger man when I was in my early 20s, 21, 22, 23 years old, is that if you want to have a woman, you need a house. It's very simple. Very simple lesson, but I didn't learn it. That is because my father inherited some money from his father. So my father could first buy a house and then later he got more money from the inheritance and was able to have his own house built, a house that he designed as an architect. Uh, growing up in such a way, I was not explained in any way or form that if you want to have a woman and have a family, you have to have a house. This led to extreme frustration in my life because I, as a young man in my 20s, I could not understand why some women, fairly attractive women, would take an interest in me, but then lose the interest for some reason that I'd never really grasped. And that is because women in general assume that men must know the rules. And the rules of engagement are that a man has to have a house. If you have a house, it is ridiculously easy to pull a woman in. And you were a friend from university back in the day who uh, dropped out in the second year because he had inherited half a million euros. And literally a month later, he was living together in a house he bought with a woman who was very attractive, even though he was a total nerd, had no looks, but he had a house. And so he didn't have to work for the house anymore. So why bother going to university to try to get a job? So he dropped out. You won't hear this story from women because women don't need to explain this to men. Almost all attractive women have hundreds, if not hundreds of hundreds of guys chasing them or taking an interest in them. So if you don't understand the rules of engagement, some other guy will. Maybe the other guy has a house. Why would she spend even a second of her life trying to explain to you that you need to have a house? So as I said, some very beautiful women did take an interest in me for reasons at the time I didn't understand. I just didn't understand it. And the reason was that my father did have a fairly nice freestanding home. And the women knew. One Saturday morning even, a woman knocked on our, on our door. I was, uh, I was studying in, in my student town, but sometimes I would spend the weekends at home with my parents. And this girl knocked on the door and she'd found out that I was studying in the same town she was studying in. I never met her. I didn't know anything about her. I'd never seen her before, but she knew who I was. And why did she know who I was? Because her mother had told her that my father has a big house. So she decided one morning to come and introduce herself. She was chatting with my mom and dad who had opened the door. I came downstairs and, and uh, they introduced me to her and she was smiling and very flirty and I was very confused because normally speaking you know I don't have the Chad looks to get the beautiful women this was a very beautiful young woman and she was interested in me I had no understanding I, I couldn't get it but of course it was because of the house she knew we had a big house and that's what she was after I didn't understand that other women in my hometown may also have had an interest in me, but only after they found out my dad had a big house. And they lost interest the second they realized I was never going to get that house. See, my father spent all of his savings on the house and was basically living off of welfare at that point. So he had a big house, but no income, no money. 
we were not rich. We were not wealthy people. We just we were just really lower lower middle class people who happened to have a big house. So this led to a whole bunch of confusion for me. Is that for two reasons? One, I as a young man was not told this lesson. I was not taught, dude. Whatever you do, get the house. Get the house. Get the house. Get the house. It wasn't explained to me. I couldn't figure it out. I just didn't understand it. For a very long time, I mistakenly believed that women cared about your personality. (laughs) I no longer believe that. Women don't care about your personality. They care about what assets you have that you are willing to donate to her. And if the assets are good enough for her to have a nest so she can have a baby, then she'll do it with you. And that's it. That's how women are. They don't care about men. They may care about their babies, but not about you. Now, I'm not going to cry about it, but I have. When I was younger and I failed so hard with women, it's because I had my priorities all mixed up. I was trying to be an interesting fellow, designing, sculpting my personality, and to be good with women, to be talkative with women, to have things to say to women thinking that's how you get a woman. No, you could be a dumb brick of an idiot but if you have a big house, you get the girl. It's that easy. How, the, how it really works is from a bit more philosophical perspective. If you as a man want to put your baby in a woman's womb, you need to put that woman in a comfortable house. That's just how it is. And the, the better your house, the better quality the woman is. So because my father didn't have to go through this process, he couldn't teach me how to do it either. My father got some money in his late 20s so he could buy a house when houses were cheap in the 1980s in uh, in the Netherlands. And then he got more money in the mid-1990s to buy a plot of land, a small plot of land, where he was allowed to build his own house. I could never do that because since my father spent all of the money he had on the house, had no more money left, no savings, I wasn't going to get anything, in fact. But I didn't didn't make the proper connection that I literally was going to have to be a slave for the rest of my life. I was going to have to work a slave's job to pay for the mortgage, to be able to get a mortgage, and then keep paying off the mortgage in monthly installments for like the rest of your life. Um, You know, you know, they say that in the Netherlands, the average cost of a house today is like 300,000 euros or or somewhere between 250 and 300k, which is an extraordinarily large amount of money for people who don't have it. If you have to earn that with an average wage, uh, while also paying for all your other expenses, that's going to take you a lifetime. But what the banks don't tell you is, when you go to a bank and you want to get a loan, your mortgage for 250k, it's not 250k that you're paying. You're paying half a mil. See, by the end of the whole run, when you've paid off all your monthly installments with interest, it's because of the interest that basically the price you're paying is double of what the value of the house is. Anybody working to pay off a mortgage is effectively a slave of the banks. You can't escape that. And this is why, this is why so many beautiful young women, they flock to those guys who either have a house who inherited money to buy a house, who have an extraordinary career to buy a house, who are successful athletes or DJs who have money to buy a house or whose parents have a house or whatever it is, you need to have a house. And this is why so many men fall behind in this market because they start from nothing. They start with, you know, 500 bucks in your bank account or zero. Try getting a house from zero. Right? That's a very different experience than when you're 28 and you receive half a million in your bank account or when you're 22 and you receive a million in your bank account or you just buy a house and get a girl and have a couple of kids. It's a lot harder to do when you have to start from nothing. Jordan Peterson, I, I mentioned him at the start of the video, he doesn't explain this to you. And I wonder why. Why doesn't Jordan Peterson explain to you that women are all about the house? You have to have the material assets to provide for her, just like a bird would investigate another male bird's nest is it good enough is it proper for me can i have my eggs here and if if the nest is big enough and good enough and safe enough she'll move in with him and have his eggs right unless she's cheating because even if you do have a house then there's the risk of women trying to upgrade their house by getting a richer man to replace you 
So I suppose I want to have some closing remark here is that in general, women still see men as the providers of material wealth. Even in our so-called super feminist time, the women still expect the man to have the house and the income to pay off the mortgage or to have the savings to buy it off the bat. Uh, if you don't have this, you're simply not going to be considered attractive, even if you have a wonderful, intelligent, fun, adventurous, exciting personality, but you don't have a house, you're nobody. You're a bum. They don't care about you, and they never will. What women do nowadays in the modern Western world, what I've noticed is that young women, they will take a boyfriend, right? Uh, and what they do is they spend his money on better makeup, on better photography equipment for her Instagram profile and they will use his money to upgrade her clothing wardrobe in order for her to go to the better parties where she can find another guy who has more money and then she does the same thing and she keeps doing that process where she switches from one boyfriend to another who has more money she climbs up this ladder until she feels that she can climb no more and then she settles down for whatever the guy has that's how it really goes I mean, it's, it's ludicrously difficult for a man to escape this rat race and be a chad, so to speak, because being a chad, by definition, means you have to have something women want. And uh, that either means you have to have a house or multiple houses and money and wealth, that's one thing, or you have to be extremely good looking. You have to be at least an eight or a nine. Because I found out in my life, women will have one night stands, but only with men who are more attractive than they are. So if you're a six, you're not going to have one-night stands with eights. But if you're a six as a guy, you can have one-night stands with women who are fives and fours, if that's what you're into. Meaning men fuck down, yeah? women fuck up. And this is the law of nature. It's one of those rules of engagement. Men fuck down, women fuck up. Women get to sleep with men who are more attractive and wealthier than they are. And us men, we are going to have to sleep with women who are less attractive, who have less wealth than we have. And that means that the women who are nines are the most depressed women on the planet because there are no men who are tens. Or maybe there's one or two who have a billion dollars at age 23 who are also extremely good looking and smart and exciting. And those guys, you know, they are so extremely rare that the women who are nines can't find them. They can't find their upgrade. So they are the most depressed women in the world. Well, I want to leave it at that. This is a bit of a, a social, I don't know, psychology video. Um, I will always come up with, since I actually have a well-developed personality, I will always come up with very interesting things to talk about. So this, this was this for today. <laughs>